Last time, we left Yi storming through the waters south of Korea, savaging the Japanese fleet wherever he went. He had driven them first to consolidate their forces to try to thwart him, and then, finally, to give up on offensive naval operations entirely, restricting their fleets to just defending the vital supplies coming in at Busan. Now it was in this last harbor that Yi would attack them. In the two months since the Battle of Angopo, Yi had trained his men, reinforced his fleet, and tried to rationalize the structure of Korean naval command. Now, on September 1st, 1592, he was ready to take on the combined Japanese armada at Busan. His fleet of 166 ships set out to destroy the nearly 500 Japanese ships awaiting them in Busan Bay. He caught a few stragglers along the way, but the Japanese had finally learned from their past encounters with him. They were holed up in the harbor now, and while Yi's ships were able to fire into the harbor from outside Japanese cannon range, he couldn't find an opening to get close enough to achieve the type of complete victory he craved. As long as the Japanese were in that harbor, they were protected by the surrounding troops and cannon on the shore. By the end of the day, Yi's fleet had destroyed 130 ships and the Japanese hadn't sunk a single vessel, but the Japanese forces still held the all-important harbor of Busan. Yi had not been able to break their last line of supply. Now they'd be able to re-entrench and reinforce the harbor. As winter set in and the campaign season slowed down, the situation on the ground changed as well. An army from China